Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Snowbirds and CF-18 release updated 2021 air show schedules. Also, Rocket Lab reports anomaly during launch. And new Robinson helicopters include enhanced audio alerts. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode with the latest news, stories you don't want to miss. According to the International Council of Air Shows, the Snowbirds have updated their schedule. The Canadian Forces Snowbirds initially released their 2021 air show schedule during the 2020 ICAS Virtual Convention in December. Since then, the team spent their early season training at the team's home base in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, and recently moved to Kamox, British Columbia, where they plan to complete the balance of their 2021 air show preparation. On Wednesday, the Snowbirds released an updated schedule seen on your screen, reflecting some of the changes. Recently, unveiling their new Strong at Home paint scheme for the 2021 season. The Royal Canadian Air Force CF-18 demo team has also released an updated 2021 performance schedule. The CF-18 demo team will be headed to Kamox, British Columbia later this month for their spring training. Here's the first half of both teams' updated 2021 air show season schedules. More news after the break. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. Affordable and economical, Pipistrol is proud to present the Alpha Trainer. Offering excellent fuel efficiency and a durable composite design, the Alpha Trainer can be operated from virtually anywhere. Whether you're a first-time aircraft owner, assembling a fleet, or running a flight school, the Light Sport Alpha Trainer from Pipistrol is a dynamic option. Learn more about what the Pipistrol Alpha Trainer can do for you at pipistrol-usa.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation community, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. NTSB investigators continue to gather information about Wednesday's mid-air collision involving an SR-22 airplane and a swear engine Metroliner near Centennial Airport, Denver. No one was injured when the swear engine Metroliner operated by Key Lime Air and a Cirrus SR-22 collided as the planes were landing at Centennial Airport. The NTSB investigator in charge of this accident has interviewed both pilots and an NTSB air traffic control specialist has listened to recordings from air traffic control. Interviews of the controllers working with the SR-22 and the Metroliner pilots are planned. The Skiatuk Municipal Airport hosted a ribbon-cutting ceremony on Friday, May 14th, in honor of the airport's new 3,000-foot runway. The $2 million project began in 2020 with reconstruction of the existing asphalt runway with concrete and the upgrading of an existing stake-mounted runway edge lights to higher quality base-mounted fixtures. The grant also included funding for an obstruction survey to aid in the development of the new GPS instrument approaches at both ends of the runway. NASA and Boeing are targeting 2.53 p.m. Friday, July 30th for the launch of the company's Starliner Uncrewed Orbital Flight Test 2 to the International Space Station. The updated launch target is supported by the station's visiting vehicle schedule, Starliner readiness, and the availability of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket. Boeing recently completed end-to-end -end testing of the Starliner's flight software by flying a five-day simulated OFT-2 mission to the station. 
Bell has confirmed that the Bell 407 has received its Type Acceptance Certificate in Bailiwick of Guernsey. This milestone will allow more European customers to add the aircraft to their operations. Around the world, there are more than 1,500 Bell 407s in service with 97 aircraft currently operating in Europe. European customers seek out the Bell 407 to fulfill a variety of missions such as public safety, corporate transport, and more. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. Following a successful liftoff, first stage burn and stage separation, Rocket Lab experienced an anomaly during its 20th electron mission running out of toes. The issue occurred following second stage ignition during the flight on May 15th, resulting in the loss of the mission. The launch vehicle's second stage remained within the predicted launch corridor and caused no harm to the public, Rocket Lab's launch or recovery crews, or the launch site. Electron's first stage safely completed a successful splashdown under parachute. Rocket Lab is working closely with the FAA to investigate the anomaly and identify the root cause to correct the issue for future missions. We are deeply sorry to our customer Black Sky for the loss of their payloads. We understand the monumental effort that goes into every spacecraft and we feel their loss and disappointment. Our team is working hard to identify the issue, rectify it, and be safely back on the pad as soon as possible," said Peter Beck, Rocket Lab founder and chief executive. Our last top story coming up after these messages. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Errol Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical, with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. In Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Whether you're charting a steady course or pushing for the ceiling, Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. Welcome back. This is our last top story of the show. Few aviation environments can make use of visual and oral warnings as readily as a rotorcraft, starting with the all-important low rotor warning to all manner of cautions that can help a pilot stay on the right side of physics. Recent updates to onboard instruments and audio systems have allowed Robinson to incorporate enhanced audio alerts across its model lineup. All new Robinson helicopters now provide the low RPM horn as an audio alert through crew headsets rather than instrument panel mounted speakers. In addition, a headset audio alert for high RPM has been added. New R66s also have a headset audio alert for high torque or high gas temperature. This alert is equivalent to the first limit indicator found in some larger turbine helicopters. It warns the pilot when nearing either operating limit without the need to continuously monitor multiple engine instruments. Company President Kurt Robinson noted, providing the warning as an audio alert rather than a visual indicator enhances safety by allowing maximum heads up flight. Well, that does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. 
And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with store ideas or just to say hi. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.